Religious beliefs have inspired many of the world's greatest works of art. These master artworks have fueled the imagination of fashion designers, yielding some of the most innovative creations in the history of fashion. I am Ayushman Mitra from Bobo Calcutta, and today we are talking about iconography in art and fashion. It was most important for me to answer the questions that I get asked most, which is obviously the eyes. They're everywhere. <laughs> it's really funny. And I kept thinking that why did I choose the eye, specifically the eye, to be this motif that I wanted to use compulsively in my work. I started painting when I was around 10. My uh, maternal grandfather was one of India's very well-known fine art painters. He did a textile design. He did bridal makeup. He was very known for his jewelry designs as well. So while I was growing up in this household, I was always exposed to all of that, you know. And uh, of course, I think you pick up things when you when you're young. And uh, firstly, I'm Bengali, and then you have this entire household completely active with great rejoice and fun and pomp and let's do this guys every single day there was never a dull day i used to be in don bosco so i used to have like thursdays and sundays as holidays so thursdays i used to just go up to my grandfather's studio my mom used to send me there i used to be his assistant when he used to go for his makeup assignments i used to be around when he was draping sarees designing jewelry his gifts for family for friends, for work, for all the pujas that we had at home. I was just there doing all of this. And no one cared that as a boy, I'm not supposed to be doing this and I'm supposed to be doing that. Because I'm sure they must have identified that there was something in me that was drawing me to all of this. Kumar Tuli, New Market. It's cliche, but it's true, guys. Gongar Ghat. You know, Maddox Square, my village house, Durga Puja. These memories have stuck out to me like, like literally, like, like a parasite, if I might use that word. And the first thing I knew was that I was just drawn to these large, massive eyes of the goddess. And in rituals, they used to say that, you know, sometimes you look at the eyes and I obviously knew it was a mud statue, but during rituals with all the dhuno and the aarti and the smoke and the drums, something just lit up all the time and all your aunts and your grandmoms used to say, oh look, 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 the goddess is now smiling. And I used to be like, but it's just a mud sculpture, I mean, it's the same expression. Only later I understood that what they meant was that they were deriving some kind of joy that they wanted to feel from a mud sculpture. It was the iconography of those massive eyes. I'm like, wow, it's a mud statue. And just look how people are so driven to understand those large eyes. I was in boarding school at Mayo College in Ajmer, the best days of my life. But it was a different school of art, you know. The entire idea of Rajput miniature. And the first time I saw it, I looked upon a painting. I remember it used to hang in, you know, my class five common room. It used to be a painting of, you know, Bunny Thani, that one-eyed lady with the long nose and Natni. I'm like, oh, there's something that's traveling. I'm like, yes, it's the same thing. And then just visiting shrines, temples, meeting people, tattoos, villages, people around. The iconography has always been the eyes. If you look at a lot of shrines in this country, you know, there just would be a rock smeared with Sindur. But people would stick eyes onto it. There will be a Shiv Lingam. We all know what a Lingam is, but there will still be eyes on the Lingam. 
so i understood that there is some kind of depth that you know the idea of vision the idea of how the eyes look like or how people say that you can penetrate into someone's heart and soul just looking into their eyes and it all matched coming from bengal studying in rajasthan and then for graduation i was studying cinema i studied the bengali masters ray khotok and every time we had a class there was something about the eyes and it carried on and on for some time because the eyes has also been something that has been used and reused as a symbol of hope i would like to guess because even from cave paintings nobody literally painted the eye but there was always this patch you know of something being drawn and uh, modernism abstractism of course broke that form i've always been told if you if you cut out the eyes people can look into the other parts of the painting better because the eyes attract a lot of attention automatically it takes you know it takes it there so i thought that yes maybe that's a great idea so i started breaking form and listening to people they were right but i never ever got complete satisfaction of painting something without the eyes and i told myself are you i are, are you scared are you being vulnerable do you want to get into the market because you love the eyes and then i got them tattooed on both my arms and then i live with them i have always seen a lot of emotions in people's eyes love sorrow debauchery distress joy content almost disastrous but that feeling of hope you know there's there's something so dewy about the eye and i have never been able to leave it and currently as i work in the industry if i make a collection that does not have the eye at all i'll have people calling me up and saying that no but we want something with the eye and of course while start making clothes discovering frida discovering picasso so it all just got merged into one jamni roy pablo picasso and frida kahlo i mean these three people artistically because i don't know these people i mean they passed before i was even around but uh, just the influence of them and who gave me this influence jamni roy's work is obviously been a great great influence to me because i also think growing up uh, in calcutta in bengal you are so exposed to his work you know on calendars in, in form of prints uh, at 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 various homes he is only present and what is very endearing is the childlike quality of his work the the simplicity only when you look closely and and you start understanding his process you realize the strength the strength in the lines and the impeccable sense of balance and composition and symmetry strokes the flow the colors it is it is not stagnant at all you know there is this beautiful flow even in these bold hard lines that really makes him the 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 master of uh, modern art in india and uh, later i went on to discover picasso and uh, was influenced by his cubism then came in frida and her surrealistic world so it's a mix of all three elements you know there's germany's form there's picasso's cubism there is frida's uh, surrealistic world the idea of love and loss it was it was to develop a world for my own self and i think i have taken so much from these three masters and just made something that is my own and that's how the iconography I'm so in my work are actually because of these three people I started using flat colors I was very very afraid of shading I was very afraid of uh, mixing tones and tonalities I used to be mostly involved with uh, line drawings and uh, it was it was a very slow process so I I never predecide a color what happens is that it is just in my memory scape somewhere in the iconography of 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 all these things 
and uh, they just all come together and while mixing you set a tone a palette in your head and you just keep filling and blocking sometimes you end up changing a color sometimes you end up keeping it sometimes the artwork completely changes form so the tonality is actually set in the head because you have all these images all these great memories of, of the art you've seen of your childhood of, of, of the gods and the goddesses of these famous masters and their work from cinema so you end up drawing from everywhere and you have your basics ready and then you just start building up from there so that's what the process with the colors and the form is like I think it's also our our strength our, our, our imagination our willingness to experiment with, with different worlds that we've grown up with you know the practical world the mythical world the physical world you know, the other realms, the heavens above, you know, life and death. So as an artist, what you want to do is, at least me, you want to mix all of these together and create something that is actually not there, but there in form of your art or in form of a garment, you know, whatever you put out there as an art form. It is your ability to create that universe. And while you're creating this universe, all these different influences, it might be religious, it might be childhood stories, it might be love, loss, life, death, education, travel, everything that you experience internally and on the outside as well, you try and create an ideal planet, you try and create an ideal realm, almost behaving like the creator, the god. And you put in things that you like. You, you, you color the flowers in the shades you want to. You paint the sky in the shades you want to. You can put 10 eyes and 10 hands and you can have elephants and horses and fish flying. It is completely in your capacity. The idea of creating hybrids, the idea of mixing up various cultural backgrounds to create something that is so specific but so inclusive and something that is completely yours. I think iconography really matters here because it is all about what you have borrowed in terms of since the time you were born, since the time you've been looking, since the time you've been experiencing. And art obviously plays a very, very strong influence because a drawing book and a crayon is one of the first things you hand to a child, right? And you know, the first lines, the first strokes really makes an impact and it is from then that you develop something for it or even if you are not an artist you learn to admire it or you're just okay about it but undeniably that is one of the first tools that's given into your hands and the face is something that's always drawn first so I think it is also to do with the human mind and how these you know, motifs or iconographies stick to you and you start developing them in your own style from a very young age. As a young company, there's not much that we do or make where fashion is concerned. I still don't know it. I have never been to fashion school. I have only done fashion management, but I've never learned designing. I still don't know how to cut patterns. I still don't know the proper way of stitching things up. I can draw and I explain myself and things sometimes happen, they don't happen, I'm still learning completely. But I just want this to go out. This idea of, of the eyes being hopeful, the ideas of, of, of being together, the ideas of liberation. And I think these kissing faces with these large charming eyes really bind us together. And it is time that just get together. Thank you so much, the Kirinnadar Museum of Art. This was so great. I wish all of you happy pride, God bless you and we will get through this. Thank you.